Hey, hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Tonight we are going on a journey to one of the older DLCs for Trains in World. Well, without any number at the time when it was released, I guess. And it will be the Long Island Railroad. Hey, AJ, thank you for moderating my stream again. How did it happen that your color in, in the chat turned to yellow? Is that a new layout or did you get a new role? Well, since we're waiting for AJ's uh, reply, it's blue for me, okay, it's yellow for me. Uh, maybe this is uh, a specific for the user then. Um, the Long Island Railroad. You have two trains on it running the M7 and the M3 in the Long Island Railroad, the LIRR livery. We um, had those trains, the M3A and the M7A, not the exact trains, but quite similar trains, running on the Harlem line the other day in the streams. And, uh, well, a lot is the same, but uh, there are some differences too, especially in driving and braking. And um, as soon as you click on one of the trains, you can see that you can choose ten, six, or eight car variants of all those uh, of the, of both trains. And mm. clicking on one of them, choosing one of them, you actually uh, select what kind of services you can run. So um, they differ between the variants because. Different train lengths work on different uh, routes, paths, and so on. And the Long Island Railroad DLC is actually a DLC that um, offers uh, quite a nice variety of, of branching services. It's not just A to B. Um, what is the Harlem line a bit? If, if you um, let go of the Yankee Stadium, very, very short branch, one stop branch. Um, but we will see it later. It is more like an X that you that allows. You can see it here a bit already. This is one part of the X, and um, I would like mm. to run this service here. I would start in a New York Penn Station and drive an eight-car train to mm. Hampstead. I go back to October so that we have a bit more light. Um, maybe we just jump into the service, look at the train, and as soon as we go to our first stop, we will look a bit more on the signaling. The signaling mm. on the Long Island Railroad is infamously glitchy. I'm not going to lie about this. Um, some people say it is totally broken. Some people say it is totally unplayable. I don't think it is unplayable. I'm not sure if it is totally broken, but it definitely has some some glitches. But you can, you can definitely use it. Also, the security uh, systems or safety systems. Um, we just have a look. Maybe we will do a, a second uh, stream about the uh, specific safety system that we have on on that route, the automatic speed control (ASC) what is different from the access that we had on the Harlem line and at least uh, in the time that the DLC is set there is no access on the Long Island Railroad. Nowadays, I don't know if they implemented it nowadays but if you look at some of the videos on YouTube that you can find for the Long Island Railroad you can see that there are access transponders in the track so and on the train there is actually uh, some stuff that points into the direction that they want to implement ac uh, access and you can read that they want to implement access I think uh, until the end of 2020 but if it happened if it, if they are running on access now I don't know um, but we have to live with what we have in this DLC anyway so New York Penn Station to Hampstead uh, 5 in the afternoon we are starting with an 8 car train you can see here, AJ, that we are 554.7 tons heavy and we have a length of 675.9 feet. That is a bit more 
if I am not miscalculating a bit more than 200 yards. Yeah. As soon as I jump into the train, you will see that it looks quite similar to the train that we used in the Harlem line. So we have to set the master key to on. It is going upwards. Then we have to set the reverser to forward and then we can open our doors. We are here in an another underground station, New York Penn. You remember Harlem Line has the great central, uh, the Grand Central Station underground terminal as well. And you can see the passengers are leaving the train before it even started. You will remember that we have to <coughs> inflate our brake pipe before we can use it. We have to put the combined handle in from emergency into max brake, then push the charge brakes button until we have at least 90 psi and the rest will the train will do on its own. We have to switch off the marker lights and the headlights on on this train. I close the doors so we can start. Here are the fuses. We can switch the ATC to on. The access switch here you can see is non-functional. The dead man's pedal is there. It is not functional as well and the alerter. And then you can see it here, the time is coming, we have to start already. There is a general speed limit of 15 miles per hour in the station area here. Regardless of signal speed and whatever, you can see the cap signals are telling us a 70. That is already quite stout for an underground station area. You can see those signals here. They look a bit like the terminal signals that we had in the Grand Central Station. Now the signal downgraded from 70 to 60. That does obviously not make a lot of sense. We have to stay below the 15 miles per hour here. Oh, the sign. We will look at it as soon as we have light again, AJ. We actually have some lights for the brake gauge. We can have some cabin light if we want. I usually enjoy it more without it. Those signals that you can see here underground with the three lamps on top and one lamp on the bottom. They are actually about 100 years old and, and I'm not talking about the signaling system but the actual signals themselves. As far as you can read it up in the sources. Those are one of the oldest uh, light-only signals in the United States. Because they are underground, they can rely on light signals because the problem 100 years ago always was that you cannot get lights that are bright enough so that you can reliably see them in the sunlight. Now, having passed the signal, we are out of the station area and we can accelerate accelerate down into the tunnel and that is actually quite fun because we can accelerate to 60 if you look at the speed profile here this is the 15 for the station area and then we go to 60 in the tunnel and now the signal here with the 60 is actually actually w what it uh, it is correct let's say just like this and uh, it is fun accelerating downward into the tunnel. Why do we have to run through a tunnel here and go downwards and downwards and downwards until we reach the center of the earth? No, no not necessarily that, but we have to go deep enough to pass the East River underground. So we have to go underneath East River from Manhattan to Long Island. From Manhattan to Brooklyn, I guess it is, if I'm not mistaken. And for that we have to dive into the tunnel. As soon as we are through this bend to the left, we can see that if we are still braking, we are losing speed and this is about the time when it gets straight again where we can apply a bit more power so that we don't lose any more speed and now it goes up again on the other side <coughs> and we will resurface 
on Long Island. Okay, I will announce it and you will hear it because I will honk when the tunnel is over. This is what I've seen in, in some of the videos that I watched that uh, drivers blow the horn when they are about to come out of the tunnel in a fashion that is a bit like short short long and the long is when they are driving out I don't know if there is an official pattern or if it was just in that one service that I watched the video of so now here we are closing into the area where we leave the tunnel and out we are out we are AJ you can watch again are you still with me let me know that you are okay all right and you can see a lot of weird signals coming up as soon as we are past the signal box here now we are in an area that is called Herald interlocking in Brooklyn I think it is still and from here we will go on part of the track that is owned by the Long Island Railroad exclusively for by now we are still on track that is owned as far as I know by Amtrak and that Long Island Railroad uses because they are allowed to do it but it's not their own but this is the signal box for the Herald interlocking here on the right and you can already see those funny signals that look a bit like dominoes they can be on the ground like dwarf signals but they can also be up on the mast and the next funny signals are those the position light signals with those amber or yellowish aspects not the green yellow red but position lights now track knowledge is important because after the next domino style signals we have to be below 45 here you can see it on the speed diagram for this diverging line here we need to be below the 45 the cap signals won't tell us they still le let us think that we are in a 60 limit but actually we are in a 45 limit so now we are branching off and then we are on Long Island Railroad exclusive territory here as far as I know closing in on Woodside we can let the train coast again distance are given in feet not in yards because we are in the United States I still don't know why they did it like this but it seems to be consistent I will start braking at about 1500 that was just the alerter saying hello here you can see one of those dominoes on a mast I'm not really sure if uh, drivers on the Long Island Railroad blow the horn when they are approaching a station I've seen it in videos that they don't do it in other videos they did it so I'm not really sure about that I will bring the train at a stop here at Woodside station see it's 8 mu this is our stop position one click more please and now we stop all right we are already a bit late but anyway passengers have to board and now that we have reached the, reached the first station, I want to look at the presentation that I prepared for this route. 
and then when we start again we will look at your sign what does the sign say then you have to tell me what sign it is actually that you are referring to AJ but the first thing that we do is a little recap about the US signaling regulatory framework we have done this a couple of times but I think it is worth every time to look at it again the Code of Federal Regulations title 49 and the section 236 with its different um, sections or subsections and dot 23 is abjects, uh, aspects and indications of signals. If you want to watch the full explanation of that you will have to uh, look into our Cajon Pass stream where we, uh, where we actually spend more time on that. On that uh, part. What I wanted to highlight here is that this part of code tells us that aspects shall be shown by the position of semaphore blades that were the old or well, that used to be the old semaphore signals, color of lights, that is what most of the signals nowadays do, and then position of lights. And position of lights is what we have a lot here on the Long Island Railroad. Also the cap aspects of cap signals shall be shown by lights. I don't do it here, or by illuminated letters or numbers. Remember on the Harlem light we had illuminated letters in our train uh, indicating the cap signals and here we have illuminated numbers. Then again the Trinity, each signal needs an aspect, a name and an indication and we have the basic prerequisites for each signaling system red for stop, green for go at maximum authorized speed and the yellow and the lunar for approach or restricting in any combination thereof. And we can also see a green light, a series of vertical lights, a series of vertical lights and for the red we have a series of horizontal lights. And this is what we actually get here a lot. A series of vertical lights, a series of horizontal lights or um, a series of lights at an angle of approximately 45 degrees to the vertical. So here we have in the Code of Federal Regulation the source for those funny signals that we saw already in the approach to Woodside and that we will get a lot when we run this service on. Again a black signal, a signal that is out should be read as a red signal so that we have a failsafe fail system here and everything else is in the operating rule book or in the special instructions of the carrier in question. We've also learned that there are carriers that work together like in the GZOR organization they share a general code of operating rules like the BNSF, the UPRR, the Union Pacific Railroad that is, or Caltrain. Those are the three obviously there are many many more but those are the three that we have already looked at or will look at in case of Union Pacific in the streams here. And then there is NORAC that we have uh, talked about on the Boston Sprinter stream where we have uh, the signal aspects already in the Unified Operating Rules book unlike the GZORR where the signal aspects and names and indications are set out in the <coughs> specialist instructions of the carrier in question and then we have seen on the stream about the MTA Metro North Railroad that they are a carrier that are doing their own stuff and the funny thing is in New York area we have mm, more than one commuter railroad carriers and uh, actually two of them are run by the Metropolitan Transport uh, Authority in New York that is the Metro North that we had a look at in the Harlem streams and the other one is the Long Island Railroad. So they are two railroad carriers run by an authority uh, that is more or less run by the city. And we will see <coughs> what the Long Island Railroad rules say and it is a bit different from the Metro North Railroad. So even though they belong more or less to the same authority they do their own stuff and because there is happening so much in the New York area I tried to shed some light on it for people who as I 
are no New Yorkers and can not easily uh, reflect that from their own experience because they are running on those commuter rails every day. I've tried to uh, draft or sketch the New York area. This is more or less the New York area here. The blue stuff is water, the white stuff is land and you can see here on this part this is Long Island right here with the beaches in the south and the uh, port area in the north and uh, here we would have uh, Brooklyn and there is Queens and this is where the Long Island Railroad runs. This thing that looks a bit like a finger is on the tip Manhattan, Harlem and so on and then on the left this is New Jersey and Staten Island here on the bottom. <coughs> and now let's see where everything is on the Harlem Line and on the Long Island Railroad. Grand Central Station that was <coughs> where we started on the second Harlem stream and the Harlem Line DLC is more or less this Central Station to White Plains. Obviously in real life the track goes on much longer but in the DLC it stops at White Plains or at North White Plains Yard to be exact <coughs> and this is more or less what it covers here we run uh, more or less to the north along Park Avenue then we cross the Harlem River that is about here I did not put it in the map on the bridge uh, on that scenic bridge that we have in the DLC very very lovingly made and then we end up here in White Plains and the road obviously goes on the railroad goes obvi obviously goes on this is Harlem MTA Metro North Railroad for trains in world and then Penn Station this is where we just started this service that we are in at the moment it is very close or <laughs> uh, uh, rather close to the Grand Central Station in Manhattan both um, but we did not run to the Grand Central Station and to White Plains but we went into the tunnel and we crossed the East River here underneath and then we came to Long Island here in Brooklyn I guess it is still here I don't know maybe this northern part is called uh, is belongs to a different quarter but this is what I always imagine more or less as Brooklyn and there is Queens and there are the other districts Jamaica we will get there this is more or less a, a big junction from there the DLC goes on we get to a station that is called Floor Park I put it here on the map because there is a branch there is one branch that goes to Hicksville this is where the um, DLC ends obviously the route in real life goes on <coughs> beyond Hicksville but uh, the DLC ends in Hicksville this is I think why it is called actually Long Island Railroad Penn Station to Hicksville and uh, I said at Flora Park there is a, a fork and there is a forking branching line to Hampstead so these are the two ends of that part and on the other end if we don't want to start at Penn Station we can start at Atlantic Terminal and go to Jamaica so this is what I said we have an X here and this allows actually for a bit of variety in the services because sometimes you start at Penn, go to Hicksville or Hampstead, uh, or you start at Atlantic Terminal, go to Hicksville or Hampstead, or the other way around. And there is even a very, very short branch about here that goes to a horse racing area, um, Belmont, I think is the name, Belmont Park. And uh, yeah, there are some services from Jamaica to there too. This is between Jamaica and Floral Park, but it is only a very, very sm a small and short branch. So this is MTA Long Island Railroad and then what we need to know is that Penn Station does not belong to the Long Island Railroad but it belongs to Amtrak and connects to New Jersey, to New York and to uh, the Northeastern Northeast Corridor, Northeastern Corridor should be should be the name right but important it is this is why I printed it green here Penn Station connects to the to Northeastern Corridor and to the Amtrak territory and this is Amtrak territory and Amtrak territory runs through the tunnel and up until a uh, herald interlocking this is important to know because um, <coughs> we encounter Amtrak signaling 
on that part of uh, the the track and not necessarily only Long Island Railroad signaling. This is what we did in our service. We started at Penn Station, ran through the tunnel and then at Harold's interlocking we branched off to Jamaica and uh, yeah, now we are in our Long Island Railroad territory. Yeah, I hope I didn't bore you with that. It was important for me to actually know where all, all those lines are running and to understand how this is connected to the Northeastern Corridor and um, why we have Amtrak and NORAC signaling up until this point here. <coughs> Thank you, AJ. Now to the signaling itself. Again, our matrix here. MTA, Lear for Long Island Railroad. For some reasons, they write railroad in two words so that they can use this abbreviation. What we need to have, because the Code of Federal Regulation tells us, we need to have a clear signal that is obviously green, that allows us to go maximum authorized speed. We need to have a stop signal, that is a red signal, that allows us to go no speed at all, but to stop. Then we need some restricting signal and we need some approach signal. This is more or less the basic framework that we get from the Code of Regulation the code of federal regulation then we have already learned that we do not already necessarily need to use a green lamp but we can use a horizontal series of lights like this this is what the green looks in the uh, typical long island railroad position light signals here just horizontal and why horizontal and vertical for the stop just imagine this as uh, a crossing gate as long as it is open, it points uh, vertically in, into, did I say horizontally, it is obviously a vertical <coughs> arranged series of light here. So this is the open crossing gate. This is why we can go. Whereas here on the red side, this is the, clo the closed crossing gate. We cannot go. We have to stop. So if you just may uh, have this picture in mind then you can translate those signals without a problem into reds and greens and those are the dominoes that i talked about the domino style signal they are more or less the same but they just have two lights not three and they are usually whitish and not like yellow or amber like the like the three lamp position lights but the alignment is the same vertically open bar green horizontally closed bar closed gate red and then there are dwarf signals that are really dwarf signals they have this triangular rounded triangular shape and they are mounted to the ground and they have similar aspects but they have only one head you will see that those others here can show two um, aspects underneath each other and the dwarf signals can only show one <coughs> but again the same thing it is uh, horizontally aligned it is the closed gate it means stop those are the wayside signals and you have already seen that on the m7 train we have cap signaling and <coughs> Two train drivers in real life get some sort of training on spotting signals like there are so many almost equal signals and the trains sometimes go so fast they can never catch the actual signal. Well, obviously I, I would not know because I'm, I'm not a train driver in real life and I'm not running a railroad carrier, but I guess they get all kind of training to spot that. And even on the simulator you develop, um, well, sense for that you know where the signals are supposed to be what I know is that in real life train drivers learn the route so they should know by heart where there is a signal and expect a signal when it is coming up so they can actively look for the signal and then it is obviously more easy to spot and to see what it is showing <coughs> yeah Back to our signaling, we have seen the wayside signals and then the question is how do they translate to um, 
cap signals. We have looked at this in the Boston printer stream where we um, had a look at how the NORAC wayside signals translate into the cap signaling that we had on the F40 locomotive and the speed display unit that we had there and we have seen that in the NORAC uh, territory we had a quite restrictive cap signaling that always gave us one definite aspect very soon, as soon as we were approaching a reduction in speed limit we were getting the um, the, the corresponding number on our aspect display unit in the Long Island Railroad uh, cap signaling it is a bit different because on the cap signal indicator, what it is called here you can get different um, indications for the same wayside signal. This is important to know. The cap signaling system here does not always translate a wayside signal necessarily into one possible indication, but it allows for the translation into different um, indications on the cap signaling uh, indicator. That is a bit like the flashing green in the NORAC where it points you to what your uh, in-cap signaling system tells you, right? But it is for the clear proceed signal all the time. So it depends what track speed you actually are running on and the track signal indicator translates the proceed that allows maximum authorized speed into the maximum authorized speed actually. So the driver will see from the signal aspect what the civil speed, the track speed, the maximum authorized speed is in this uh, part of the track. If everything works as it is apparently supposed to work. The problem for me a bit is that I did not get any primary sources on the Long Island Railroad operating rules and the signaling system so I had to get the information from the stuff that others published on the internet and uh, there is one excellent guide that uh, Cactus Juice who also wrote an excellent guide on the Boston to Providence signaling system he wrote one for the Long Island Railroad too and this is my prime source for what I'm telling you here. I tried to corroborate it with other sources and well, but we have still take everything with one grain of salt because the sources are not primary. But it makes sense. But what he says and what seems to make a lot of sense is actually that unlike on the MTA Metro North Railroad where we had the cap signaling aspects on one side and Axis was showing us the civil speed in a different window. We have it combined in one. So the signaling system actually picks up the uh, civil speed, the track speed, and incorporates it into the uh, cap signals. So if we get a proceed, we at the same time get the track speed, or are supposed to get it. As we have seen, it did not really work on the branch where we were limited to 45 and we did not get a 45 here on that signal. N we should not be getting a 45 if we got a green, but then maybe we should have had an approach medium instead. Well, but this is the idea here and uh, I cannot stress this enough that the signaling system itself uh, picks up the, the civil speed and translates it into signaling aspects. Interesting. So it's a different approach than on the axis territory where you have two uh, sources of uh, sp of speed limits and the lower one always uh, uh, takes precedence. Here we have the civil speeds in the um, cap signaling system. What does a red light tr uh, transform to? It should from the sources that I read uh, translate into a 15 red restricting that is the lowest aspect that the uh, that the cap signal indicator can show but obviously you should not try to find out whether it does because you should not run a red light and why 15 because the restricted speed is 15 max you know that a 15 if you can 
um, if you if you can see the track in front of you. Um, if you cannot, you have to slow down in a way that you can stop within half the distance that you can can look at. The approach signal is a yellow on top. That is what we usually have, and this is how it translates to the position lights. It translates into this, we have read this in the Code of Federal Regulations, 45 degrees. This is the half open crossing gate. This is the open crossing gate, this is the closed crossing gate, and this is the half open crossing gate. So it's on its way to going closed. This is where we get it and approach. Next signal will probably be red. Same for the dominoes. And what do you have to do at an approach signal? You have to slow down to medium speed. This is why we have to know what is medium speed. And we have two different medium speeds in the Long Island uh, Railroad territory. It depends whether we are in the part of the track that is controlled by the automatic uh, speed control, then medium speed is 40. If we are outside of that territory, then it is 30. Most of uh, the track that is covered in this DLC is within the um, ASC territory, so medium speed is 40. This is where we typically get a 40 as soon as we are passing a signal here. Um, only at Hampstead and Balmart, I think, at, at uh, those stations that are terminuses where you cannot go on anymore, you drive out of the territory and then medium speed will be 30, probably. So what you can get on an approach is a 40, for this kind of medium speed, or a 30 or a 15. Again, it is not translating into one particular aspect, but actually <coughs> you have a range of aspects that are possible here. <coughs> the closer you get to the red signal after passing the uh, approach signal, you will be taken down by the cap signaling system. At least this is the idea. It can totally happen that when you pass the yellow signal, you will get a 40 aspect and the closer you get to the red signal, the signals are grading down the aspects on your cap signal indicator. There are between wayside signals several points where the signal can change. Signal, uh, code uh, change points, I think that's, that's the name actually, where the train can get an impulse from the track and then change accordingly. I think for NORAC it was stated that the signals should normally usually not change between code change points or wayside signals unless in an emergency. In an emergency obviously they can always downgrade the signals and tell the train to stop. But usually you should um, get new readings on your cap signal indicator only at wayside signals or at a signal changing or code change points in between. And then you can pass your approach signal, get the 40, and at the next code change point it is downgraded to 30 maybe, and then to 15, and then you approach actually the red signal. So this is the idea about this uh, kind of signaling system, in-cap signaling system, and well, sometimes it works in the game, quite often it doesn't. What does our restricted signal look like? Again, we use the uh, yellow lamp, but this time we don't put it on the top of our signal hats, but on the bottom. So typically two-headed signal here, the yellow lamp on the bottom, underneath on the red, is a restricting. How does this translate to position lights? The red one, we already know how it translates it to a closed gate. The red, uh, the, the yellow here, does not translate into a half closed ascending 45 degrees but into a descending 45. This is a bit like if you imagine a closed crossing gate and someone is lowering a bit so that you can step over carefully and proceed. This is the restricting. So, so don't mix up the ascending if you read it from left to right is the approach yellow and the descending one is the restricting yellow on the position light signals, right? They could have translated this into a lunar white. They didn't. I don't know why. Then you, uh, then you would not have uh, had the situation that the yellow light translates into different ones. <laughs> not confusing at all. 
<laughs> well, uh, I hope I'm still making myself clear at least a bit. <coughs> yeah, at least on the domino it is the same. Descending translates to restricted. And also here on the dwarven one. They can have a descending bar. Uh, bar that is lower to the ground on the right side so that you can step over and proceed very carefully. Um, it means the same, restricting. Max 15. This is why you get this on your cap signal indicator for restricting. Then there is a stop and proceed aspect. We have seen that in, in, in other signaling system as well. You have to stop, look and then go on, just like a stop sign on the road where you can't just run over it, but you have to stop and then proceed carefully with restricted speed. So you have to stop and then you can go on with restricted speed. In the game we usually don't have that because it is um, a difficult thing to implement that you have to stop and then pass a signal that is actually red. What does it look like if you have the light signals? You have a flashing red underneath a non-flashing red or it translates to this funny aspect here where you have a red on top and then one single bulb lit on the lower signal head. That is again a new aspect that those position lights can see but it is the last one, at least the last one that I could verify. And uh, yeah, on the domino thing, the same. Closed bar, one dot to indicate that it is a stop and proceed and you will get the 15 here, all that. And important to know, the approach signal here can precede any of those three. It can precede a restricting, it can precede a stop and proceed, obviously, and it can precede a stop signal. So this is why I put those arrows here, so that you can see this approach signal can uh, yeah, precede those three types of signals. But obviously you always have to prepare for a stop, yeah, because that is the the most restricting one. You cannot hope for a restricting so that you can on go on with at least 15. What other types of speeds do we have in that system? We have a slow speed, a slow speed that is 30 in the automatically controlled ASC territory and 15 in the non-controlled territory. This is where y what you usually get when you're driving out side of the ASC territory, you get the 15 and then you have the 15 indicator here and it starts flashing. I think this is indicating that we are outside and that you have really to slow down to um, driving on site. <coughs> then we have the signals for a medium clear. That is totally what we know from a lot of other systems. We just move the green bulb down one signal head in the middle. That is the medium clear. And uh, here it is the same, if you translate it, red, closed bar, green, open bar. The third one we don't have. But red over green is the medium clear. Same on the domino. And it will translate into 40 if we are in ASC territory, or to 30 if this is our medium speed. Same for the slow clear. We move the green down one more and now we cannot translate it into a position light signal because we don't have a third signal head here, neither on the domino, but we can use a dwarf signal. So here the open gate on the dwarf is a slow clear, allowing us to go 30 and 15. We will see those here, the, mm, the other one we will see right here, but this here we will see on our service just when we are passing Jamaica. And this translates into 30 or 15, depending on what is the slow speed for this part of track actually. Medium, clear, slow, clear, they both have a special approach aspects. So gr uh, yellow over green is the typical approach medium. And this translates, just translate the color into the positioning. The approach yellow translate into the uh, ascending 45 degrees, the half open bar, the green into the open bar. So if you read those signals, just try to translate them into colors. This one is yellow, this one is green. Same on the domino. And this is an aspect actually that can translate into almost anything on the cap signal indicator, depending 
on how much traffic there is on the track depending on how far you are away from the uh, medium and depending on what is actually medium speed at the next signal you can get 80, 70, 65, 60, 55, 40 or 30 and you can get them all in the downgrading fashion. You can start with the 80 here at the next point 70, 65, 60, zero, so you can get funneled down until you get to the signal where you be where you have to be at medium speed. For the slow approach we already know that too, yellow over yellow. Um, there is sometimes the aspect of yellow over red over green. We don't use that because we want to translate it into our two-headed position light system here, yellow, yellow. If you see that, yellow over yellow, it is an approach slow. You can go faster than slow, but you need to be ready to be down to slow speed at the next signal. Dominoes, totally the same, so the dominoes totally replicate the position light signals here and it can translate into 40 if that is medium speed, 30 if that is medium speed um, or already 15. Again you can get the downward uh, facing funnel here to funnel you from the approach slow to the slow version of the slow and we will be getting this when we are driving into Jamaica. Then there are some more signals uh, here in the approach department. There is a signal that is called a slow approach. On color signals you would have the lowest of three signal hats being yellow and flashing, the other one's red. This would translate here into a red over yellow. And now you can see that this is important to not mix up the descending and the ascending 45 degrees line here. Red over ascending is slow approach, red over descending is restricting, even though it both translates to yellow. Dominoes just replicate and here we have a dwarf signal again that does this. This does the um, approach half open gate fashion and dwarf signals own always indicate slow speeds. It is a slow clear, it is a slow approach or less, restricting or stop. Dwarf signals can never allow a faster speed than slow here. This is important to remember. Yeah, a slow approach orders you to go 30 if slow speed is 30, we have seen slow speed can be 30, or 15 if slow speed is, is, is 15. So you can see you have typically an approach slow signal here and here you have a slow approach. What is the difference between approach slow and slow approach? Approach slow means you can be faster than slow but you need to be ready to be down to slow at the next signal. Slow approach means you have already to be down to slow speed at the signal and prepare to slow down even more to stop at the next one. So don't confuse slow approach and approach slow. But this is not the end of the confusion, AJ, I'm sorry. We also ha have a limited speed but only on the track that is shared with Amtrak. New York Penn to Herald Interlockings, the part that we already went through. This is mainly the tunnel and the part after it until we branch towards Woodside. And uh, this is why I put it in pink to see that it is only applicable for part of the track. And limited speed here is 40. You see it does not differ a lot but we are in a different signaling territory here. And this is, well, the aspect is actually typical. We have the medium aspect upgraded to flashing green. This is the thing that we do because if the flasher breaks then the green light will get steady. So it will downgrade the signal but this is always better than upgrading the signal by mistake in case of a failure. So this is a fail safe aspect. If the flasher breaks then the light will be on steadily. Um, and we can have our position lights flashing. So we use the same as um, effect here. We take the position lights from the medium clear and have it flashing on the lower um, signal head. 
and then we have a uh, limited clear here. Same with the dominoes and now because we are now in the NORAC dominated uh, cap signaling territory where they like their wayside signals to translate into just one aspect and only one aspect we get a 40 here definitely because limited speed is 40. We have an approach limited we just put the yellow lamp on top of our limited clear aspect instead of the closed gate red we have the half open gate yellow same on the domino and it translates to 40 already we can see what we have seen on the boston stream the approach signal already gives you on the cap signal indicator the speed that you are aiming for at the next signal this is what i said why the cap signaling in in the norak on the northeastern corridor and norak dominated uh, territory is quite restricting because it gives you the speed that you are going for already on the approach signal even though the wayside signal would allow you to be faster than the targeted speed at this point. Out of uh, this part of the track we also have a medium approach. That is the yellow in the middle if you have three signal heads or a flashing yellow on the bottom if you only have two signaling heads and it translates into a red over a flashing yellow also on the position light signals. Also on the dominoes and it always translates into a 40. You can see there's there are only slight differences between the signals here, right? The normal approach what allows for 40 or whatever and the medium approach that only allows for 40 on the cap signal indicator there is not a lot of difference between them. So all those signals here slow approach, medium approach and normal approach they all can precede one of the restricting the stop and proceed or the stop aspects they differ in what speed the train needs to be at when they pass the approach signal on the approach train has to slow down to medium speed immediately if it is not already below medium speed here medium approach it needs necessarily to be below medium speed slow approach it necessarily needs to be below slow speed if it can accelerate after it until it gets to the stop signal depends whether there is a part of track where the interlockings are over and uh, the red signal will be after a part of track um, but this is governed more or less than by the cap signal uh, and the aspects that we will be shown there an advanced aspect we have only in the pink territory that is more or less the the territory that is shared with Amtrak. Yet yeah, there you can get, and this is what you know from other signaling system as well, you just have the approach yellow on top flashing. And so the approach aspect starts to flash also on the demo dominoes. It always tr translates into 40. So this is a definite 40 and this can be a 40 as well. You can see the differences are slight. Important to know the pink signals here, they can, according to Cactus Choose at least, only appear on the part between Penn Station and Herald interlockings. I think that I have run a service before on the Long Island Railroad DLC where I ran into a medium approach service when uh, a signal when I was approaching Jamaica from the east so this is not, not not technically, it is not Amtrak shared territory. So I'm not quite sure about that. But this is what Cactus Juice set out, and it makes sense what he's setting out in his in his guide. But I can only um, tell you what I make out of the sources that I have and what I can see in the game. That's it. AJ, I hope you're still awake. It is not really easy what we have in cap signaling. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Nice to hear that. And um, you can understand that it might be a bitch to get it into the game, this kind of signaling. Uh, now my monitor wants to switch off. I have to tell him that I am still here. All right, so we can continue driving. And from what we can see, is that we have here a yellow over a green this is an approach medium aspect and this is I think the last color 
signal that we are getting here. Our cap signal indicator is still telling us 60. And if you look at the speed line, it is actually right. We are through this 45 section. It ended at the station here. We can accelerate to 60 and then it will uh, upgrade to 80. And this is where the cap signaling system will actually work. Ah, the sign. This? Emergency brake valve? Or what sign did you talk about? Is that the sign? That was it. Well, this is the emergency brake valve. If you need to stop, you can pull it. I don't do it, but it works. I've tried it before. So now you can see we are already approaching Jamaica. And you can see on the signals up there for our track, it is uh, vertical, translating to green. And now I'm speeding because I was watching the signals on the tracks next to us. It was horizontally aligned. That means the other tracks are blocked. There's a train coming from the other direction. And now you saw that the cap signal upgraded from 60 to 80 and this is how it is supposed to work. Actually those cap signals are supposed to take into account the length of your train and uh, only give you the upgraded aspect after you not only have passed the speed changing point but also the end of the train has passed the speed changing point so the train has run its own length and in this case it actually worked scenery it is quite nice in my opinion. Obviously running through New York it's always a problem that you cannot get that much people and cars on the road that you would see there in real life. It cannot be as busy as it is in real life in a simulation like this. But nevertheless I like the scenery. Again next signal bridge. We have a proceed the other lines have a red. So really for if you if you want to learn those position light signals I would suggest just translate every signal head into the color that they represent. This makes it rather easy. There are services where you have to stop at those stations that we are just passing right now. You can see a football stadium. Alert is saying hello. And now we are running through this station where we go underneath this big house. And I know from my track knowledge that even though we are still 9000 feet away from Jamaica, we have to slow down seriously after this station because we will be running into a not signaled track speed reduction to 35 at the next signaling bridge. So this is why I'm bringing down the speed. Next signaling speed I need to be to 35. You can see it here. 35 here. And this will not be signaled. 
I'm spoiling this. We are just r staying in our 80 aspect here. As f much as I understood the system, we should get a 35, but obviously there is no bulb for a 35. So I don't know how they solve that in real life. You can see we aligned the 35 after this bridge here. So this is something that you need to know from your track knowledge, otherwise you will just run into it. Also, if you watch the videos that are on YouTube uh, from real cab rides, um, or, well, cab rides that is of people sitting here in this seat and can actually look out of the front window, then you can see that there are speed signs and you don't see a lot of speed signs in the DLC here, you don't see whistle boards and in those videos you can see that there are whistle boards actually. Now we get a 40 after we are in the 35 section quite some time. So it's actually an interesting question, if, if the track limit is 35 and we have indicators for 40 and 30 only, what will we get? Probably the 31. Well, okay, again red for the track next to us, green for us, and now please look at the next signal that we are getting. We are downgraded to 60, we have an approach slow here, and on the left one, look at the lower signal head. It looks actually as if all five lights were on, but only after you approached the signal. At first it looks like they are off and then it looks like they are on. So they have a, a, a strange state that is between on and off in this DLC. And I don't know where this is coming from. Now I have to slow down to 15 because 15 is the track speed starting at this point. And we did not get a signal yet that told us to go down to 15 and no cap aspect. Nevertheless, the track speed goes down to 15 at this point. You need to know that if you don't want to get docked for speeding. Now we have to crawl along the platform to get into our parking position. And while we are doing this, you can see one of those dwarf signals with the 45 degree ascending aspect that translates into an approach slow. No, into a slow approach, sorry. <laughs> now I mixed it up myself. And this translates into a 15. Slow speed being 15 here. this again. Dwarf signals always ordering you to go 15 or slower, slow speed. So here it is a slow approach. What I actually like is this glass effect that they used on, on this station here. Not always depends on the lighting, but in general this is really a nice glass effect. I, I would love to see that more often. So this is Jamaica station. This is where the track from the Atlantic terminal comes from the left here and we are coming from the right. And where we pass on the Long Island road until we get branched at Floral Parks again. We start still with the 15 aspect because the signaled speed is uh, still slow from the dwarfs. And you can see another dwarf signal there telling us slow approach. That means the aspects here are correct even though the track speed goes back to 35 at this point. The signal aspect on the 
cap signal indicator corresponds with what we get wayside. There's a train waiting to go into the station until we left. And then the next dwarf is showing a slow clear. Open bar, vertically arranged, meaning proceed but only with slow speed. 15 here. This is why it translates to 15. Well, if I say it translates it properly, you can always debate beca because you can say, well, shouldn't it be 30 for slow speed? Because we are in ATC controlled territory. Well, obviously the slow speed here is 15. So we will have to keep below the 15 until our cap signal indicator tells us otherwise. And we are approaching a way sig wayside signal that is on a signal bridge above our heads and you can already see it. It is ascending over open. That means that is a yellow over a green approach medium. And for approach medium we can get almost every indication. Let's see what we get. As soon as we are through the interlockings we should get an upgrade and with this new wayside signal anyway. So what does it upgrade to? 240. Okay. But don't forget we are still in an area where we have a 35 limit. So if we don't want to get docked we mustn't go faster than the 35 until we are out of that. So we are getting the 40 for the 35. Maybe this is what they do. I don't know. Now we see we are getting to the point where the track speed uh, increases to 80. And let's see what the cap signal does. Funny thing, now the distance seems longer. This is because we are now we passed the speed changing point with the tip of our train but the end has not yet passed it. And in this DLC for some reason it just puts the speed changing point in the diagram again further ahead in front of the train. On other DLCs usually you are frozen inside this speed changing point on this diagram. Here it works differently. And now we should finally get an upgrade on the cap signaling. See how long it takes. Now it upgraded. And now we can accelerate. So that we are not late at Hollis. This is a branching lane, a line here. That is not represented in the DLC as far as I know. It looks quite impressive with this long ramp. I think it leads to uh, West Hempstead. <coughs> there is some kind of a depot on the right. And then it is always the question how fast can you or to what speed can you accelerate until you stop, start slowing down again. This is not the station where we have to stop, don't worry. But still, if you compare the performance of the trains here in this DLC with the performance of trains in the Metro North Harlem line, you will most probably find that the trains here perform worse than the trains in Metro North territory, meaning they accelerate slower and they uh, don't slow down as effectively as they slow down in uh, the Metro North Territory. By saying so, I more or less overbraked here a bit. Well, according to my private brake curve in my head, this works out. 
So Hollis, we are late obviously because the IA trains did not adhere to the cap signals that we got on the way. So we are definitely late here behind schedule. Okay, stopped a bit short. Anyway. You can see that the platform is not long enough for the whole train. And unfortunately the train opens the door even in places where there is not a platform. In real life I think the door should not open and in one video that I watched actually the driver was informing passengers that if they want to get out at a certain station they would have to move to the first six or whatever cars at the station before because they would not be able to get out of the train from the last four or whatever cars. So I guess this is how it is done in real life. The problem is that you cannot go from one train set to the other and the eight car train is composed out of I think three or four train sets. So you need to be in the correct train set if you want to get out at the station where not the whole train can stop. Queen's Village is the next stop. Let's have a look at the scenery before I have to go into braking mode again. In this part of the track you can actually try to get to the 80 line speed. It should start slowing down at about 3000 500 feet with about 50 60 percent and then watch it at 70 we should be down to 3 at 60 to 2 2 at 50 to 1 7 okay we're a bit behind we have to apply a bit more brakes brake a bit harder Thirty, which should be at eight hundred. Yeah, now we're getting there. Two hundred at, at twenty at four hundred and fifty, fifteen at two hundred, and then we can slow it all down accordingly. Queen's Village is a rather long platform, so don't go. Oh yeah, no. Next one is the one where you don't go to the end. Eight. So those uh, stop markers, they are actually quite accurate here in this DLC. What you cannot say about every DLC. So. We made up some time. So stop markers telling you 8 to 12 car multiple units stop there. Next up at Bellrose. We will get a downgrade to 60 because line speed is dropping to 60. This is a spot where the aspect display works as it is supposed to, as far as I remember. I think this is where you can branch off to the horse race track. Belmont, Belmont, don't know exactly what it is the name. And here you can see the stadium. This is the stadium that belongs to the horse race track. Mm. 
there are some services that branch off here in the DLC, what is nice. Alright, now I'm a bit late on the brakes. So I have to apply them a bit harder. We will get a switch to 60 as soon as we are getting next to the platform. But this is not a problem because we have to step stop here anyway. By the way, you can see that this train's th this train slows down almost exclusively using dynamic brakes. Uses the air brakes almost exclusively for the last bit of slowing down and to hold the train in place at the platform I think that we've seen on, on the German S-Bahn trains as well, almost exclusively done with electric brakes. Using the air brakes only for holding the train in place, or if there is a really high brake demand, like in an emergency braking brake application. So Flora Park is where we branch off. This is why we have to go slow down to 45 on the branch where well we will not get signaled on the aspect display unit. We are already quite close so we cannot accelerate to the 60 anyway. getting a 70 what is correct because the drag speed went up to 70 but what does not make a lot of sense when we are approaching a 45 reduction or have to stop anyway here in Floral Park you have to make sure not to run to the end of the platform because your stop marker for the 8 car train is a bit before the end of the platform like here so make sure not to run it and slowly it is getting dark We are still a bit behind schedule. So now we are in the 45, not signaled, even though we have a 45 indicator. And for this branching part, we have to keep to the 45. By the way, AJ, you can see that this is again a third rail train just like on the Harlem line you can see that we will switch to 60 and then what just happened now so this is alright, this was good as you would expect it we can accelerate to the 60. Keep in mind that we have to stop at Stewart Manor. Manor? Manor, Stewart Manor. Even though we're getting an aspect that allows us to go beyond the 60 soon. 60, I would st 
start slowing down at 2.2 two, I guess, so we could accelerate a bit more. There was a level crossing, wasn't there? And on level crossings, they do their 15L pattern. As far as I could see that in the videos. It's a 14L, it's a 14L pattern. So, now we are already on the branching line from Fo Floral Park to Hempstead. We have to go all the way to the end of the tra of the platform. We did not really catch up so, so that much time. I should have been more aggressive with closing the doors. And actually on, on this part of the track, or at least on the corresponding track to, to Hicksville, there are whistleboards, what you can see in the videos, and there are no whistleboards here in this DLC at all. There are also uh, speed signs, especially when you're leaving Jamaica Station in the video. So I don't know if they are just missing in the, the DLC here, or if it is correct that at the time that this DLC is set those signs were not there but I actually suspect that they are missing Well, to make up speed, I will have to slow down later. Funny thing is, almost after every station, there is a level crossing so that you have to use your horn when departing from the station oh what did happen now tiger dream on you opened the door on the wrong side instead of closing them on the correct side <laughs> Now it's just closed now, so I'm losing more time. So Garden City, the station that we are approaching now, you can see it on the speed limit here, is the last station on the track that allows you to go a bit faster. 
then we will have to slow down really hard because then we will go in a one track part until we get to Hampstead. But as long as we can, we just go fast. Signals got downgraded to 60. And you can see up ahead actually that there is a red over green, what is an medium clear. Oh, I went too far, too far, because here also we are not supposed to stop at the end of the platform but at the stop marker before. Is it here? Yeah, here's our stop marker. This is where I should have stopped the train. a 30 and then a 15. <coughs> so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Here this medium clear should get us a 40 aspect on the cap signal indicator. What it did, what it does not anticipate is that as soon as we go to the right on this switch here you have to be below 15 because the track speed limit is below 15 here. you can see it here 15 track speed cap signal indicator 40 it should go down to 15 at some point There are some services where you have to stop at Flora Park at this signal that we got the medium clear at because there is a train coming from Hampstead and you have to let it pass. Now we are to 30, but still does not make sense because we are still running in a 15 track speed section. And again, look at this signal. It looks like an approach and there is a faint yellow light sometimes visible, sometimes not really really visible. And as soon as we get closer, it gets more and more visible. 
until in the end it looks as if it was on and now we have a very strange aspect here an approach yellow ascending yellow over a single a single light we know the horizontal bar with a dot being a stop and proceed in some old rule books of the Pennsylvanian Railroad I saw the descending the restricted yellow with one dot being an aspect called caution but I've never seen an ascending yellow with a dot don't know maybe it warns us that we are about to leave the signal territory oh now you can see the overspeed indicator because I was faster than the 15 and now you can see the 15 flashing and you can see on the lamp here maybe it is easier to see it here no XPDR and the ATC lamp gone off so we are out of the um, automatically controlled territory here and we're getting a thunderstorm so now we cannot really see the beautiful Hampstead station that we are heading for this is what you imagine running on a New York City commuter rail train in November, isn't it? Yeah, so we are outside of the automatic speed control territory. Are restricted to restricted speed. The funny thing is, if you select a service that starts here at Hampstead and drive back to New York Penn Station, then you will be not outside ASC territory, but you will be inside and have a allowed speed of 30 don't know if that is correct it doesn't seem so anyway passengers are waiting in the rain for the train to arrive to take them back to Penn Station So we will do them the favor. That they can get into the train and out of the rain. So that's it for the service today. A nice lightning strike until people have ooh la la better ca keep the camera here <laughs> we lock the doors so that the train does not get too wet lightning strike and that's it well yeah you have seen there are some issues with the signaling system especially with the cap signaling system um, even on this service but it is not completely broken it is um, well you have to have some root knowledge you need to know where the signals are where you can rely on the cap signaling aspects and in what parts not and then you can enjoy this DLC nevertheless I'd be really happy if there was the um, 
intention and effort on DTG's side to fix those older DLCs signaling and safety system wise because I think they totally deserve it. They are beautiful, each and every one of them is beautiful and they have sometimes very unique uh, systems and signaling systems and they should get the attention even if it does not get more money. Thank you very much, thank you AJ for moderating and see you next time.